This is what my experience was like spending three days in the psych ward. But first, what is a psych ward? According to Google, a psych ward is a place for patients with mental illness who have not yet recovered or stabilized to the point where they can be released back into the community. And that is completely true. A possible nickname for a place like this is the bug house, the funny farm, and my personal favorite, the loony bin. Now, your next question is probably, how do you even get sent to a psych ward? Well, in my case, it was because I was of danger to myself. But due to YouTube's TOS, I'll be skipping over what exactly sent me there instead in this video we will be diving deep into what it's actually like inside of a psych ward but first we have to take it back to about four years ago i had just turned 18 and graduated high school so this whole fiasco happened during the summer well one summer day during the morning hours at 5 a.m something clicked in my brain and i decided to make a really bad decision and when this happens at least where i am first responders are required to take you like i didn't have a choice to say yes or no i was like legally kidnapped when the first responders showed up to my house they had to forcefully get me into an ambulance mind you as i'm in the ambulance i'm in some sort of wheelchair so when we arrived at the hospital i got my little personal assistant head ass and he just pushing me around and shit but that lasted all about 10 minutes eventually i was traded off for my personal assistant head ass and now i found myself in a dark lit room with literally nothing in it but a chair for me to sit in and a desk with a man sitting behind it. The room reminded me of an interrogation room. Well, that's pretty much what it was because this doctor guy was asking me so many questions about the situation that got me there, my personal information and all that good stuff. When that was over, they took my belongings and put them into a bag labeled with my name. I was also searched and stripped of the most simple things like drawstrings in my pants and anything else that I could really hurt myself with. Then I was escorted to a place that to this day gives me nightmares, the psych ward. I'm getting escorted through a long, dark hallway. Some of the lights were flickering and the air felt chilly. At the end of the hallway is two metal doors accompanied by thick reinforced windows. The windows had scuff marks that looked similar to the wear and tear of what you'd see on the glass at hockey games. To be honest, at this point, I am freaked out because scuff marks don't just appear on glass. I was just hoping that when I got in there that there wasn't going to be anyone throwing chairs and shit. As we approached the two metal doors, I began to panic even more. I remember thinking to myself, I have got to get out of here. But little did I know is that I'd be spending the next 72 hours there. The doors opened and immediately, I'm smacked in the face with the smell of feces and piss. But before I even realized, the door shut behind me and I could hear the strong click of the door locking. The layout of this psych ward was large. There's about 50 to 60 patients walking around and on the right side of the room sat 20 to 30 beds, along with a few tables and two bathrooms. On the left side of the ward was three to four smaller rooms that literally reminded me of jail cells. In those rooms was a desk with two chairs and that's it. On the outside wall of those jail cell looking rooms was two phones, then directly across from the phones was what I learned to call the fishbowl, which was slang for this huge glassed in area that allowed the staff of the hospital to monitor the ward 24-7. During my first couple minutes in there, I just stood by the door where I came in, and I just observed. Within seconds, a fight broke out between two crackheads. Oh, you want this problem, cub? You want this problem? Oh, bink! Oh, oh, bink! Oh, bink, bink! Oh, 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 shit! Oh, oh, oh! I managed to pretty much stay out of the way, however, a team of workers came into the ward to resolve the issue. After a few minutes, the staff broke the fight up. I remember the staff repeatedly saying, yeah, he's getting admitted. I didn't know what that meant, so I just continued to observe. Not too long after that, a man who was going through what looked like a psychotic episode or was tripping off hallucinogens started freaking out. This man was about 5'7", maybe 300 pounds, was running around the psych ward screaming, knocking things over, and rolling on the ground. Yet again, the staff had to come back in and resolve the situation. But this time, it took about six grown ass men to get this guy under control so i'm just sitting there by the door like what the fuck is going on right now where even am i and before you know it i lost it I remember feeling so overwhelmed with not only what put me into the psych ward initially, but the things I was seeing in there and experiencing too. I made my way over to the fishbowl and made eye contact with one of the nurses who was sitting behind a computer screen. I yelled through the glass saying, please help me get out of here. I don't belong here. And as soon as I started pleading for help, her eyes fixed right back on the computer screen, completely ignoring me. So I raised my voice again and said, excuse me, can you please get a nurse down here to talk to me? I do not belong here. And yet again, she ignored me. Frustrated, I began to bang on the glass. The nurse then bursted out of her seat leading in towards me meeting my face at eye level and said if you continue you'll get admitted just like them then walked away 
Pissed off with tears in my eyes, I made my way back to the right side of the room and found a table to try and silently release my emotion. As I'm wiping my tears and pulling myself together, I was greeted by a patient who we will call Marty. He approached me and told me that I should calm down and explained why. Son, if you think that these nurses will not admit you for three weeks upstairs, you're crazy. I've been up there a few times, man. It is something you do not want to experience, okay? So calm down. You are up here right now, and we need you down here, young blood. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Thanks for looking out, brother. Yeah, no problem, man. What's your name? Oh, my name's Channing. Oh, my name's Marty, man. Good to meet you. I'll, I'll see you around. Immediately after that conversation with Marty, I thought back to the crackhead that got admitted earlier and made the connection to why they were acting so out of pocket. I can't imagine doing more than three days in this loony bin, let alone weeks. I thanked Marty for his information before he walked away back to where he was sitting. Soon after that, a staff member opened up the door. Alongside him was a nurse. The nurse surprisingly called my name. I eagerly stood up, hoping it was some sort of good news. As she approached me, she handed me a small medicine cup with a pill in it and a cup of water as well. She insisted that if I take the medicine, it would calm me down. So I did, and I don't know if that was some sort of perk 30 or whatever, but I was geeked. Within about 30 minutes, whatever that nurse gave me had me feeling sedated. I remember feeling so tired to the point where I just needed to get some sleep, but if you remember at the beginning of the story, I told you guys that there's 50 to 60 people in this psych ward with only 20 to 30 beds. Do we see a problem here? Now, me being me, I didn't want no smoke with anyone in there. For all I know, some crazy dude is gonna bite me or some shit. So when it came down to sleeping, I just had to deal with it. I learned quickly within a few hours that the more that I complained, the more they deemed me crazy sedate me and then admit me upstairs so the smartest thing for me to do in there was to keep to myself even though i know i couldn't get a bed and that first night was rough i spent most of it pacing around the psych ward trying to unpack the whole experience as if that would help calm my senses i was also in a delirious state from whatever meds the nurses gave me i tried to sleep but I was also too scared to close my eyes. By the time the second day rolled around, my girlfriend at the time had found out that I was in the loony bin, which obviously had to make her worried even if we weren't on the best terms. On the outside of those two jail cell looking rooms was phones. I remember knowing her number by heart, so when no one was using the phone, I typed in her number and I made sure to call her. After that phone call, I could obviously tell she was really worried about me and upset. At this point, I'm pretty adjusted to the psych ward, so kind of like how Marty looked out for me when I had my little freak out moment, I began to do that for some of the newer people. I found myself spending most of my second day just talking to people because there wasn't anything else to do. This one girl I met was around my age. We'll call her Selena. Selena was in there for the same type of reasons as me. The way we got to share our stories with each other really helped me realize that even in your darkest moments, you're not alone. Marty eventually sat down with me and Selena and joined in on the conversation. This is also when Marty started to tell his story and why he was in there. Long story short, Marty was very schizophrenic. He had trouble knowing if his reality was clashing with his mental illness. And this was apparent just by talking to him. Just hearing people's perspectives in there was genuinely really sad each of us just needed some help but instead we were all shoved into a room with not even enough beds souping us up with meds and that's how you take care of mental illness anyways as i'm continuing my conversation with both marty and selena one of the nurses comes down to the room and called my name channing trailer you have some visitors even though i was confused i just followed the nurse eventually i was brought out into this hallway area that had seating it was basically a makeshift visitation area standing there waiting for me was my dad my mom and my best friend at the time who we will call apple yes Apple is the same one from this video. The looks on their faces when they saw me genuinely scared me. They said I looked like a ghost and almost immediately we all started to get a little emotional. I know it was hard for them to see me like this, but the worst part was seeing them and having to go back to the psych ward, still unsure on when I was able to get out of there. Because when you're in a psych ward, there is no call mommy and daddy to pick you up. You're stuck in there until a medical professional deems you ready for regular civilian life again. After the visit, it was getting dark and I still had yet to sleep. As I'm making my rounds, checking up on people and making sure everyone is okay, I noticed a smaller woman who must have been in her late 30s. She must have been one of the newer patients because she wasn't in there before my visit, so I approached her and introduced introduced myself to her along with giving her the rundown of the psych ward. It turned out this woman had literally 20 plus different drugs in her system. I couldn't even name all of them if I tried. I'll never forget how hopeless she was. This woman was so far into drug addiction to where she didn't even care about life. That broke my heart because in situations like that, you can't really make anyone change. They have to want it first. And just like my first day in there, I knew I wasn't going to be getting much sleep. So I headed back to a table on the right side of the room and tried to put my head down. Man, I just woke up and I barely even slept. What 
the fuck is going on? You mean to tell me that Eduardo over here, Shalissa was trying to get down in the fucking psych ward bathroom? Damn, y'all shameless. At this point, I've seen it all. Almost every hour a patient was released and a new patient was coming in. It's safe to say that a good 60% of the people coming in struggled with some sort of drug addiction. The other 40% were probably people who were at risk of hurting themselves or other people. Eventually, when the staff brought down our lunch, a nurse also came down with the staff. The nurse called my name and she told me to come over and sit in one of the jail cell styled rooms. At this point, I already knew it was happening. Just by observing other people in there, when you're about to get released, they basically do a sit down welfare check with you. Basically, they just figure out if you're ready to be released. So I'm sitting there and my acting is on 10. My Grammy nominated performance was enough to convince the nurse that I was ready to leave. Within a few hours, my dad came and picked me up and I was released. And for the first time in my life, I appreciated the sunshine, the trees, the air. I appreciated life for what it was. There's a song that goes, you only miss the sun when it starts to snow. And that's exactly how I felt. And as we close out this video, I want to remind each of you that you deserve your spot in this world. God created you in his image and he never makes mistakes. And if you're struggling with mental health or addiction, there are resources like therapy, counseling, and even 12-step programs to help you. I wouldn't wish a psych ward visit even on my worst enemy. With all that being said, I'll see you guys next week. Peace.